March 13th, the Portland Trailblazers will honor the life and legacy of their longtime announcer, Bill Shonley. And when Bill passed away last month, most of us knew him as the man who coined the phrase Rip City. But in today's show and tell with Tony, Tony chats with a man who called him friend. My guest today is Rich Patterson. Uh, Rich has a lot of things to show us today, but they all stem from your friendship uh, with Bill Shonley. Where do we start? Boy, where do we start? Uh, I started uh, listening to Blazer games in their second year in 71. I was nine years old. Wow. Sean's was my idol. Good evening, basketball fans, wherever you may be. Not many people get to grow up and get to be Stop friends right with circle, someone they idolize. The Pop for two, yes! When you were a kid, you actually recorded on cassette. What do we have here? This is the championship game from 1977, June 5th. <laughs> and for a while, this was like one of the only recordings of that game that yes. the Blazers had. Whenever you hear the that final call from Sean's on here, it came from this, and you can tell because it sounds like it was recorded off the radio. What was it about his delivery and his voice and his demeanor that you heard as a kid that resonated with you? The excitement. Yeah. When I started listening to the Blazers, they were a horrible team, but I didn't care because it was something about Sean's and the way that he did that and called the games that really struck me. Hook shot over Sabonis. These over. are the headphones he used in what, his the, last broadcast? These headphones right here were used on his last Blazer broadcast in, wow. in 1998. And these do not belong in my home. They belong and the Oregon Historical Society or the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, and the, these are not stolen license plates. No. Tell me about the history of these uh, plates. Well, once again, everybody who saw these plates knew that it was Sean's in his big red catalog. <laughs> and so I was helping him move a couple of years ago, and he said, do you want these? <laughs> Heck yes, I'll take those. <laughs> Years later, you ended up working for the Blazers, and you got to know Bill, but at some point you went from sort of being, you know, working for the same company to becoming friends. When did that crossover happen? I think that happened maybe in the early 90s. Being able to call Sean's a very good close friend is is something I never would have thought of back when I was that nine, 10 year old kid listening yeah. to games. He had a certain uh, dignity and grace about him that's sort of evocative of a, of a you know, bygone era. Do you think that was part of his appeal or what was it for you? It was just that Sean's was, the way that you saw him on TV or the way you, he was perceived is the way he actually was. Yeah. At the Grand Floral Parade, that was really on display there. And it was amazing how Everybody was yelling and screaming at Sean's. We love you, Sean's. Rip City, bingo, bango, bongo. Right. And he loved it. He was the, the nicest guy in the world, kind and loved everybody. Yeah. Loved everybody. And when you saw him, whether once again, whether you knew him or not, he treated you like you were a lifelong friend. And that came across. That was not phony well, but, I, at all. I know you're going to miss uh, your friend. We'll miss him uh, here in Portland. But uh, thank you so much for sharing all this, uh, these uh, gems from Bill's life. It's really special. Really neat piece. Love Thanks. That. Yeah, uh, Rich actually played a, a phone message that Bill had left for him after the Grand Floral Parade mm -hmm. and just uh, how much he loved it Aww. and how he really was oh. moved by it and how, uh, you know, he really felt. Uh, the city, uh, you know, saying that we love you, yeah. you know, but it really, it really, so I think for fans, you know, he got the message that it came through that we really appreciated him so much. He is yeah. going to yeah. be missed. So for sure. special. The yeah. cassette with the game on it. I know. That <laughs> needs to be in yeah. a museum. I totally agree. Yeah, Rich, he said he, he grabbed that cassette, the best one he could find, yeah. the best quality, <laughs> and ran into his parents' room because they had the only, you know, cassette mm. recorder and put it in oh there. He's nine God. years old. That's so, yeah. neat. Yeah. What a story. Cool that yeah, was great.